We've uh, been here nearly three months now and um, it's feeling like home already, uh, working with a good group of people and um, you know, we're obviously a little bit into the season now and have had a good chance to see the boys play and, and us as a staff work, so uh, all's good. It's a big adjustment, I suppose, moving over here, but just even from seeing Twitter, you've gone along to some Gaelic games, you've gone for trips around uh, Connacht to have a look at some of the counties. Was that important to you to integrate yourself into the province as well? Yeah, it really was. You know, I think um, you know, I've been doing this for a long while now, uh, but I think it's important when you turn up to someone's backyard, you've got to, you've got to make an effort to, to fit into what they're doing and, and find out the way they live. And it frustrates me in Australia when people turn up to our country, which we get a lot of people turn up to our country. and they try and treat it as their country and do the things that they've always done without necessarily paying respects to the things that we do. So uh, for me as a visitor here, uh, really important to get out and, and taste the new sports and taste the new food and the drink and, and the sights and uh, we've met, we try to do that as best we can. It probably eases the transition as well given that things have gone pretty well on the pitch so far. You know, magnificent win at the weekend against Scarlets particularly. Yeah, that was pleasing. Yeah, I think we've been getting better with every game and it's still early doors, you know, only four games in, but there's definitely, uh, we're on the upward curve there at the moment, which is which is pleasing. And uh, what's really pleasing, or more so, is that we've got a group that want to continue to develop, and they're certainly not resting on that. So, uh, you know, we're an ambitious group and a young group with, with not a lot of fear, which is pleasing. Um, we'll see where it takes us. Yeah, and I guess probably no one exemplifies that more than young Boyle this year, who's come in, he's run in tries, he's looked very, very impressive for you when he's got his chance this year. He's been brilliant, you know, and there's, uh, there's other players in that academy too. I think if we give them their chance, um, they're going to do similar. You know, and, and that's, the, that's a, I think it's a really important thing for a club to, to not have fear for a young bloke. You know, young blokes don't have fear and you want to support that, you want to encourage them and give them their opportunities and when their opportunities come, um, hopefully we'll see like Paul Boyle did, they take it with two hands. You've got sprinklings of international quality through your team as well and I guess last weekend we saw exactly what Bundy Aki can do for your team as well. He was he was immense last weekend. Yeah, I thought Bundy was really good. Um, I thought the bloke inside and outside had been pretty good too. Jack Cardi's playing with, with a lot of confidence at the moment and, and keeping the ball in front of our forwards. Uh, and you take your eyes off Tom Farrell, he's going to hurt you as well. So you know, that 10, 12, 13 channel at the moment is um, it, it, pretty healthy. Uh, and outside of that... Our back three um, have been pretty good too. So it, listen, it's a there's a really good feeling, a good vibe amongst the group at the moment. They're they're understanding um, the strengths of each other's game and they're working towards that and playing towards that. Tricky assignment this weekend though to host the European champions, albeit uh, you probably know the Connacht got a really good result at the tail end of last season. But probably different teams, I would imagine, given that Leinster's focus would have been different at the end of last year. Yeah, yeah, you, know, you, you can only play what's in front of you on the day, but. That was a great win by Connett last year, um, but that's history now. You know, we'll, we'll meet a, a team in blue this weekend who are going to be pretty, pretty tough to beat and, and have a point to prove. So as long as we focus on doing what we know we can do and, and, uh, and play with the pride that we've been playing with in the, in the, in the opening four games, then I'm sure we're going to put a good, a good uh, game of rugby out there for our fans. It sounds like a bit of a cliche, but it's something that Pat Lamb spoke a lot about when he came in. He wanted to turn the sports ground into a fortress. I guess you'd be trying to take as many points from home as you possibly can this year. Yeah, I think the stats are showing that home teams uh, tend to be winning at the moment. I read something the other day, it's about 80% in the Pro 14, but you, know, you, you, can, you can fall into that trap too, thinking, well, because we're at home, we're going to win. I think what's really important is that every game you're playing at home, especially in front of family and friends, that you, as you walk off that field, uh, if, if you haven't won, you're pretty proud of the performance you put out there. and um, you know, You've respected the jersey and the blokes who've gone before you in it, and and you play with your heart and that's what uh, that's what we're trying to do as a club and I know we're going to get that this weekend. Difficult start you had to the season as well, you know, given you played a lot of previous Pro 14 champions, calling it the Champions Month and then into two interprovincials before going into Europe. The fixture calendar couldn't have thrown up a much more difficult start for you. Yeah, in a way uh, it has been difficult I suppose but another side of that it's, it's probably what we wanted because you, know, you, you can't kid yourself in life so if we if we were playing easy beat teams, not that there is any easy beat teams, but teams that, that don't have that pedigree of the teams we've played, you could get to the end of the first six six months or six weeks, sorry, and, and be in a position where it's probably a bit false. So uh, we'll know certainly after this weekend and, and the next weekend against Ulster exactly where we sit in that pecking order, uh, what we need to work on, um, what's working for us, and we need to keep pushing and developing and 
uh, to set us up well for the rest of the season. In terms of developing your team and maybe making changes, when you were appointed to this position with Connacht and you assessed everything, what were the changes that you were trying to make for this year? I actually didn't come in with, with a mountain of, of preconceived thoughts because I hadn't met the people yet. So my big thing was to meet the people, um, to work out what their strengths were and to focus on that. And I think you know, we've managed to do that in the first three months. You know, we've, got a, we've got a great staff, on-field staff, back, backfield staff, our medical, our s &C, nutrition, media. We've got, we got really good staff um, and they're all doing their jobs. So my job is to try and support them in doing their job. And then on the field, we've got players who we focused on their, what we call their weapons. So what are you good at? And we're trying to work really hard at making them better at that. Um, give them a couple of things to work on or a key thing to work on. But you know, try and be positive around that. Um, so I, I came in with no preconceived ideas. But since you know, having been here, uh, there's a lot of talent, a lot of ability on and off the park. And, and my job is just to let them be. A lot of talent, a lot of maybe academy players coming through as well. I guess the Challenge Cup coming up now is going to maybe test that squad a little bit as well? Yeah, we need depth in squad and, and I, f I believe we do have that. Um, you know, to me, the, the, the top quality sod sides around the world are the ones that uh, have got blokes pushing from, from underneath and keeping the blokes in front of them honest. So as we head into Europe, um, you know, there's a lot of games of rugby this year, so we know there's going to be more opportunity for, for players to present their case. Uh, so that's why Europe's a really exciting period for us and for and for the squad, um, so we're looking forward to that and I'm sure we're going to get a few more poor balls out of it. Do you set a goal, you know, for Connacht the Challenge Cup has generally been a kind of a get out of the pool quarter final kind of territory, do you set a, a goal for what you want to achieve in the Challenge Cup this year? No, we haven't as yet, um, but I think yeah, that's a given, that, that that's what you want to do, you want to be making sure that you, you're coming out of that pool, you're putting yourself in the best position for a, a good quarter final, so uh, hopefully that's what we do and when we get to that stage we'll reassess and see where we go from there. How do you assess the pool that you've drawn as well? Because you know a couple of trips to France, decent top fourteen sides in your pool as well. Yeah, they're tough. You know, I think again, there's quality throughout that whole Challenge Cup. You know, it's uh, it's I think historically you could look at that and say, well, that's a, a lot easier. But you know, Sale's no easy easy team to play against. You know, they're fully laden back line when they get all their stars back. You look at Bordeaux and what they're doing at the moment. The big win a couple of weeks ago or last weekend against Claremont. Uh, you know, Perpignan on their, on their day can be really tough. So, um, yeah, we won't be taking any of those teams lightly. We respect them all. Uh, but what's more important is that we continue to play the brand of rugby that we want to play and, and hold ourselves accountable to the standards that, that we're pushing. In terms of, you said you came with a blank slate. You then picked Jared as captain for this year. What did you see in Jared that made decent skipper material then? Oh, that was, a, that was after about four days of a cultural piece that we did where we, uh, as a group, we sat down and looked at the what we want to be, you know, you know, what was important to us and how we wanted to, uh, others to see us. And, and out of that, uh, we had a, a peer vote on a leadership group, uh, which Jared was a part of that. And out of that, um, uh, you know, Jared was the, the standout person in my, in my mind and everyone else's mind uh, to be the skipper. So uh, it was a pretty... Um, transparent process to be honest it wasn't uh, me coming in saying he's the bloke it was a collective decision um, but he's he's been brilliant he really has he's he's growing within the role he, he he's not there yet um, and he knows that and uh, I don't think you ever stop learning as a leader you know you're forever developing but the way he's uh, accepted that role and that responsibility and and he's trying to push himself and stretch himself to new limits has been really impressive you mentioned uh, Jack Carthy a little bit earlier, you know, big performance in the last weekend, kicking 18 points. I think by his own admission he's having to work on his place kicking and improve that, but I can see things in his general play, he's just maybe kicking on another level again now. Do you feel the same? Yeah, I've got nothing to pitch it against. You know, the Jack Carthy I've met is the Jack Carthy that uh, you know, from the first time I saw him you could see he had a skill set and, and I think he is getting better with every game. Um, you know, so other people sort of market him on what, what they've seen in previous years, but the Jack Cardi I've, I've seen and met is, is a really confident young bloke who has an amazing skill set and just needs to be supported with that. Um, and that's what we're trying to do with him and out of that I think we're seeing a, a, you know, a young fellow that's growing in confidence and getting better with every game. I look at, um, I suppose, getting ready for this weekend. Is this a case where you're going to try and maybe bring all of your Irish internationals back for Leinster this weekend? Because you have kind of been easing them back over the last few weeks. Yeah, we've, we've had to ease them back, uh, which we've been doing. Um, but yeah, I thought Kieran coming on uh, for his second start last weekend, he was, he was better for that. Um, Bundy getting that start was much better for, for the little time that he had against Edinburgh the previous 
previous weekend. Um, so to have those boys there, Quinn Roos come through and he's he's been events for us this year too. Um, Alton's coming back. Uh, so we, yeah, they're all coming back slowly and uh, uh, you know, they're all up for this weekend. The Interpros, everyone's talking about it. I'm now starting to realise what it means to people. Um, so there'll, there'll be... Uh, There'll be no doubt that they'll be in their best frame of mind for this one. Yeah, I know Niadi Locum has kind of worked back in and now he's back starting again. He's been an absolute try machine so far. I can't help but think if he keeps going like this, an Ireland call-up can't be far away for November as well. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, um, he's had a couple of starts for us. He's, he's also worked off the bench for us. Uh, when he comes on, you know he's going he's gonna to set that field alight. Um, but, you know, we've, we've also got Matt Healy playing great rugby at the moment. Um, CK is going really well. Tin at the backs, not missing a beat. Uh, so we, again, we've got depth in squad, which is really, really pleasing and, and a healthy spot to be in. And I guess that's one of the um, double-edged swords, really. If these guys play remarkably well, Joe might bring them into a training squad for November. You might lose them for a few weeks, but I guess you'd be happy to see them get representative honours if that was to happen. Yeah, I think every young Irish young man or woman, if they're playing rugby, wants to represent their country, and I see it as you know part of our role, our responsibility, and our duty to try and give those blokes the best chance to, to serve their country. So if that happens, that's that's magic. We'd be really pleased for them, and it just means there's a, another young bloke has got to step up at Connaught and, and fill their boots. We're a few, ex- a few weeks away from it now, and I guess the focus is on the Interpros, but you must be very excited about Europe coming around and you know, big games coming into Galway in the Challenge Cup as well. Yeah, that is exciting. As I said, it's another flavour. It's a French flavour and, and an English flavour. We've we've got the Scots. We've, we've, you know, we've had, had Glasgow and Edinburgh already, and... Uh, we've had the Scarlets, um, we've got the Enterprise, the Irish this weekend, so had an Italian side too. So, I mean, that, that's the other beauty of it. It's just, you know, other nations, they all play different. There's all a different, slightly different styles. So to have two French clubs turning up and an English club, that's going to add a, another bit of flavour and a bit of spice to, to the sports ground. I get the feeling, though, Connick's intention, no matter who they play, is to run with ball in hand for the best part. That's what you've been doing so far. Yeah, listen, I think you've got to have a style and our game style. Um, I think it's always been there too, but we're really trying to, to verbalise it at the moment. We are a team that wants to, to move the move the ball. We're, we're also, as you've seen, we're, we're a team that's not afraid to turn an opposition. So you've got to be able to have that balance. And I think you know, we talk about six areas on the field that you can attack. And, and, and I know as a defensive, from an offensive point of view, it's very, very hard to defend six zones. So you may well defend five. It's for us to identify which zone you're not defending and try and move the ball to that area. So that's what we're trying to do at the moment. And... Uh, uh, it's early doors yet, but um, boys are certainly buying into it, and you know we've had a couple of results, and a couple haven't gone our way. That's important. I think the other important thing is is our defence. You know, we really pride ourselves in our D. Pete Wilkins, who's leading that defensive system at the moment, it's a great system. Um, but some of the the stats and the and the data we're getting out of that in terms of our our tackle completion, our ability to to get off the ground and make the tackles and that energy, that's all attitude, and that to me is what wins your championships. Seems to be priding yourselves on that as well because Jack said that immediately after the game at the weekend. He was asked about the great score that you'd run up against the Scarlets, but he was almost happier with the fact that you kept them to a low score. Yeah, and we were, you know, we, we uh, that, that Edinburgh game too. You look at that, that game away from home now. Um, we probably didn't have any right to be in the game with 20 minutes to go, and we weren't at 17 points down, but uh, we just defended our hearts out. And then we got the chance in the last 20 minutes and managed to get 10 points and therefore a bonus point. Um, but that was all built on defence. That was a performance built on defence, and that's when we were, you know, we were disappointed in in our Glasgow performance because we uh, we put ourselves in a position to, but our defence uh, on that on that given day uh, we didn't bounce quick enough. So uh, we've learned from that. Uh, we were much better against Ebre, um, better again, I thought, in defensively against Edinburgh, and you know, to to uh, to shut out a pretty good Scarlet side only to two tries is a compliment to that system. Thanks again for your time and the very best luck getting ready for the Interpros and then the Challenge Cup in a few weeks' time as well. Appreciate it. Thank you.